Hey guys, it is Wednesday, July 10th, and uh, we're at 57.7, so just under the 58K gang zone. And this episode is going to be about risk tolerance and number go up. So I made a tweet, and I'd like to just have everybody think a little bit about this sort of hypothetical here. Uh, here's my tweet. And the tweet is really, um, you see this graph, okay? Let me try to enlarge it if I can. So you see this graph, and you have this data, and over the last 15 years, the data goes from you know, 10 to 500, right? So you're like, oh my God, this thing has gone up 5,000, it's, it's gone up 5,000 times right? <laughs> over the last 10 years. This is amazing, right? This This graph is going up like crazy now. On a percentage basis, it's not going up that much. So in the last, you know, in the last two years here, it went up twenty percent. But you know, it's going up, right? It's it's definitely going up more than five percent interest rate. Now you see this graph. What are you going to do? Um, and uh, I would argue, you know, you're definitely going to invest in this thing X without even understanding what X does, if you see this data plot and you see this correlation, and I made the correlation to be 99% here, uh, just to, to really hammer the point home. But if I saw this thing, I don't really need to study X. Um, I, it really doesn't matter what, what X is. I just want to buy X, right? Now, <clears throat> you know, you could say, okay, well, that's great, Fred. Why, why do you want to buy X? Well, because if I want to, if I hold this thing for any amount of time, like two years, it always goes up, right? It just goes up. Now, um, when would I not want to buy X? Well, if my time frame is a month or a quarter. Well, maybe X is a little risky, like because you can see it has had some pretty big falls over the last, you know, over over a month, two months. Uh, so I do have to have a time frame that's, you know, at least at least two years for in this particular hypothetical example to buy X, but you know, it's pretty, pretty compelling, right? So if I saw this behavior, right. And I'm, uh, you know, sitting there in year 14, 15 and I said, okay, how much am I going to put of my net worth into X? Well, I'll probably put quite a bit, you know, maybe 10%, maybe 15% into X, um, without just really independent of what X is, right? Um, now, some people say, well, that's too much, Fred. Like, I, you don't know what X is. You need to study X. Uh, all that's fair. Um, you know, I'd like to understand the history of X and, and get some idea why is X going up, um, you know. But, you know, look, it's, it's over a 15-year period. I'm pretty convinced there's 90 data points here, uh, 100 data points. Look, looks pretty good to me, and the fit is really great. So I, I'm pretty convinced that X is going to go up. Now, what if I tell you, ah, it's going to go up in a line, but it's going to go up in log log space. Now, first of all, I'm like, hmm, okay, log log space, okay, log on on the uh, horizontal space. That's good because that means everything's going to be accelerating even more, right? So, uh, you know, the, these Intervals get closer and closer in actual time, right? Uh, so I love that. Now, what about the other space, the price uh, axis? Well, what that means is, in a way, it's really good because that means instead of just going up in a linear fashion, they're going up in a uh, polynomial fashion, right, or a power fashion. And that's that's better, right? So I prefer to make, you know, X squared my money than to make, you know, uh, 10% a year, okay? Because X squared, which is per parabolic, eventually, over two, three, five years, it'll go up 100%, you know? So I like that. Now, the only disadvantage is my volatility is going to be a lot more too, right? So instead of having, uh, you know, these little, little, little drops, I'm going to have, I, I could have a 50% drop in my net worth. But... I could, you know, if, if I convinced that this is the, this equation is going to hold in the future, um, you know, I, I, uh, I definitely am going to put a lot, even more of my money. So instead of 10, 
I'm going to go to 50% of my net worth. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to study what X is. I'm going to get some data as to why is X going up over time, right? But I think the rational thing to do is to put a lot of your net worth. Now, some people have posted in comments, well, yes, but I'd like to diversify. So I'm going to only put a little bit. But this is great. If you see a graph like this for X and you have another graph for Y with the same correlation, well, I'm going to put half in X and half in Y, right? That, that's even better, right? Because now I'm not betting on X. I'm not betting on Y. I'm betting one of them or some combination of them will be better, right? So, um, you know, Rob or not, uh, you know, one of the best financial analysts in the world once said that, you know, diversification you get for free. Well, you only get it for free if you have these kind of opportunities like this, right? Well, let's suppose you only see one of these opportunities and one of these opportunities is growing like a bat out of hell in log log space. Well, that happens to be where we're at. We have one of these things, which is uh, Bitcoin, right? Now, if, if you find another one, please let me know, right? But I, I've been trading for, you know, 30 plus years and I haven't seen anything like this ever in those 30 plus years, right? Um, that, that's had exactly this kind of performance. Uh, now, you could argue maybe some of these FANG stocks, but I'd, I'd argue no, not, not even, because you know we haven't had the, the longest uh, multiples of these things where they're trading as a public entity, right? So here, Bitcoin has been trading up, you know, you know from a dollar to you know, hundred thousand dollars, right? even less than a dollar. It was trading at 10 cents at one point. But, you know, kind of what, what, what really emerged on the public market, a dollar, a couple dollars. You could have bought Bitcoin for a couple dollars. Um, and, you know, it, when we've really had these explosive moves up, okay, in, in the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, X. So I, I, I really don't think there is an equivalent like this in stocks, even like things like Microsoft or Tesla or any, any of the others. And, and I would, by the way, argue that you probably should own a little bit of Microsoft or Tesla or, or QQQs, which, which I do. <laughs> so, um, so I think this is just part of the natural risk tolerance. But I think most people look at this stuff and they're like, too risky. I don't want to get involved. And so you know, part of what I'm trying to really say here is it, at the end of the day, boils down to temperament, right? And that's kind of what Warren Buffett said. He said, you know, this is not about rocket science. This is about temperament. So it's, you see this data, what do you do? What do you decide to do? And I would argue that, um, I would argue the logical thing is to go, if you see something like this, they're very rare. My logical thing is to go in quite heavy. Um, now, people aren't logical. People do all kinds of crazy stuff. They don't do it logically. And, um, you know, that's just how people are. So, um, so yeah. So, so that's kind of my, my hypothetical for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. If, as again, if you like my content on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. Um, I think I'm at about 15,000 400 now, um, but I'd love to get to 16,000. And if you're following me on uh, Twitter, thank you for getting me to 74,000. You know, these are the metrics I use to keep track. Uh, doesn't really matter other than just keeping track. But I get to get some really great guests on. Uh, and, and I hope you've enjoyed my, my for example, Jim Bianco. I, I, you know, I probably wouldn't have gotten Jim Bianco on the Kruger show if it wasn't for all you guys listening to me. So I really, really appreciate it. And so please subscribe. Thanks.